Sylvia Co. opened her first bridal store in the 1960s. By the 1970s, she was the doyen of Singapore's bridal business with four boutiques across the island. Sylvia designed the most exquisite wedding gowns and made them with luxurious laces from Europe. At peak periods, she designed up to 50 wedding gowns a month. A perfectionist, she cut every gown herself. Sylvia's customers were mostly the well-heeled. Her most exquisite wedding gowns cost as much as $4,000, a fortune then. Sylvia offered a complete bridal package and started the trend of decorating cars with wedding couple dolls. She also started the trend of brides renting wedding gowns instead of making their own. As wedding fashions changed, Sylvia closed three boutiques in the late 1980s. The last one closed in 1993. She was 76 and ready to retire. But when former customers asked her to make gowns for their daughters, she obliged. She kept sewing until she was 90. Marjorie Doggett spent her entire adult life fighting for the rights of animals. In the 1950s, she was the co-founder of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals in Singapore. Noticing the plight of stray animals in Singapore, Marjorie and another lady began rescuing cats. This led to the formation of SPCA. She campaigned ceaselessly, writing many letters to the press over the years on a whole range of animal welfare issues. Once, she disguised herself as a lab technician to find out how animals were being used for research. She also posed as an animal collector to rescue primates from wildlife smugglers. In the 1950s, she photographed many Singapore buildings, most of which now no longer exist. Her photographs appear in the book Characters of Light, a guide to the buildings of Singapore. A generation of school children grew up listening to her radio programs and singing the songs she wrote. Aisha Akbar was a music teacher who, in the 1950s, became a presenter of children's radio programs. She didn't just present the programs, she also wrote or localized songs such as The Sate Man and The Ting Ting Man. These songs were published in a series of books entitled Malaya Sings. In the 1960s, she documented the lyrics and tunes of Malay folk songs in the book 36 Best Loved Songs of Malaysia and Singapore. She wanted to ensure the songs would not be forgotten. Leaving Radio Singapore in 1971, Aisha moved to England where she taught music wrote stories for the popular BBC children's TV series Jack and Nori, was involved in various choirs and ran a property business. She later also volunteered at an ethnic centre where she spent time with the elderly who were lonely and could not speak much English. Wong Lee Seok Tin devoted her life to broadcasting. She joined the Culture Ministry's Department of Broadcasting in 1961 as a program assistant. In 1978, she became the first woman to head the department. Seok Tin's excellent command of English and her attention to detail set the tone for independent Singapore's early generation of broadcast journalists. Their brainstorming and efforts to either improve their place of work, improve their method of working, or how to do things right the first time, or how to reduce the cost of doing things. An early assignment was to cover Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew's first trip to London to negotiate Singapore's independence and the merger with Malaya. 
Mr. Lee was impressed by her succinct daily reports on the talks. She subsequently accompanied him on many of his official trips. When the Singapore Broadcasting Corporation was formed in 1980, Seok Tin was first its Deputy General Manager and then General Manager. Seok Tin realised audiences were increasingly wanting more from their radio and TV stations. As much as possible, she gave her staff the leeway to experiment. Under her charge, SBC's current affairs team produced some excellent documentaries. Teresa Chan lost her hearing and sight in her early teens. When her parents, a hawker and a waiter, were at work, she sat by herself in the tiny cubicle that was home in Sago Lane, Chinatown. A social worker referred her to the Singapore School for the Blind. Teresa rapidly learned Braille and finger spelling. She read Helen Keller's autobiography and dreamed of meeting her. In 1960, Teresa went to the Perkins School for the Blind in the United States. She spent 13 years in the US and met Helen Keller. In 1973, she returned to Singapore and, until 1990, was a teacher at the School for the Blind. In 2005, Teresa starred in the movie Be With Me, which was based on her life. Diagnosed with lung cancer in 2016, she refused treatment. She told The Straits Times, I hope people will remember me and remember that whatever their disabilities, they should have hope and not be unhappy and discouraged. She's been called Singapore's singing ambassador. A household name in Singapore when she was barely out of her teens, Anita Sarawak was one of the first Asian performers to make it in the United States. As a child, she yearned to be an entertainer like her parents, actor, director and producer S. Rumai Noor and actress Siput Sarawak. Her first professional gig was singing at a Chinese restaurant. She went on to perform at top venues such as the Neptune Theatre Restaurant, drawing capacity crowds with her sultry vocals, energetic dancing and engaging stage banter. A Las Vegas nightclub offered her a contract in 1985 and this eventually led to a long-running stint at the famed Caesars Palace. Anita performed in Las Vegas for 18 years. Back in Singapore and Malaysia in the mid-2000s, she appeared on various programs on TV and hosted talk shows. In 2013, she returned to Las Vegas and has since kept a low profile. Rahima Rahim was born to sing and act. Her father, Rahim Hamid, was known as the Nat King Cole of Singapore. Her mother was the actress Mariam Baharom, and her uncle was the singer and actor Ahmad Daoud. Rahima appeared in her first movie when she was six. When she was 14, she began to sing with her father at nightclubs. In 1972, her first extended play record, Mana Ibumu, was released. A big break came in 1974 when she won the Kimi Koso Talentine in Tokyo. Her prize included a three year recording contract with Warner Music. Releasing back-to-back -back hits such as Gadis Danbunga and Bebas, Rahima became a household name. 
When you see us walk and don't you notice that proud look in our eyes Our feet are on the ground but our souls are searching for the sky Our little sweet, happy and free, living and loving In 1989, Rahima retired to spend more time with her young daughter. In 2003, she began accepting singing and acting engagements. Rahima appeared in Dick Lee's musical Fried Rice Paradise in 2010. Five years later, she acted as a summon auntie or parking warden in Royston Tan's movie 3688.